yeah. soft, nice. beautiful landing, RAF style. Check. What do you think, man? Man, this is good. Hi everyone, welcome to Ocean RC. Captain Mike here. We've got the long anticipated BAE Hawk. This is the T1. The T1 version was what helps a lot of pilots back in time to get transition into fast jet. I remember sniffing my way around and if you were to get in the cockpit, you would find that this was the old style of cockpit. This is back in the 60s avionics and you had a green window to look through. None of that heads up display, which kind of threw us off when we went to uh, Panavia Tornadoes and all of a sudden we got a hood on. So there was a lot of transitioning from this to fast jet. This is awesome. This is our 70 millimeter version. Guess what? Our first one that has lights. And I think from here on out, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have lights, hopefully on all of our planes from here on out. Hint, 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 cause we need them. Also, we did everything we could to keep the price point down with an awesome flying aircraft. So you're gonna be happy with its price point. This thing is awesome. Let's get it together. So let's take a look at the contents in the hardware bag. You have four small screws for the vertical stabilizer. You have four screws for the horizontal stabilizer, as well as four screws for the wing assembly. The two largest control rods are used for the flap. You have three of the same size. Two are used for the aileron, one for the rudder, and the two control rods with the ball link connector are used for the elevator. You've got extra connectors and don't forget the non-slip material for the battery bay. Freewing does a pretty good job in their quality control, but just like real aircraft, it's up to the pilot to make sure that all the surfaces are correct. The first thing you want to do on each piece is check the control horns, make sure they are glued and solid. You're also going to look for the hinges to make sure that they are in proper uh, working order and that there's no defects. I have this hooked up to a servo tester and I'm gonna cycle this for about six minutes, at which time I will check to make sure that there's no hot spots in the servos. If you ever find a servo getting hot, that means it's close to, to failing. We will do the same thing with the rudder, making sure that all the hard points are glued in and we'll be checking the servo as well. I'm gonna run that for about six minutes too. And the same checks will be for the wing assembly also. As well as the landing gear. I'm going to take the retention wire and slide that in first thing through the top chamber of the aircraft until it comes through right at the other end. Now I said don't lose your wire tie and you're going to be needing that and this is where this is going to come in handy. I'm going to tie a knot, just twisty tie around this, uh, the wires here. And this will allow me to loop the retention wire around it and I can pull it all the way through. You wanna make sure that you are in the right chamber and that's gonna be the top chamber. And this is gonna go under the plastic part. the four screws, large screws, to pull it 
put on the stabilizer. And you don't want to over tighten these. On this next step, you'll want to take the retention wire and turn it up ways like this so it angles up and their loop is up this way. You want to make sure that you get it on the top chamber because now pull that up over this uh, plastic part right here like that. Wrap a wire tie around the servo lead for the rudder just like that and you want to make it just enough of a loop on there and you're actually going to place it down in this hole right here and feed it through this end over here until you can grab it. After running the wire through the hole, you can take this retention wire, slip that through, and then you can pull this the rest of the way and up to where the junction box is at. And slide that the rest of the way. And this comes in just like that. Then you'll be using four screws. Just screw that in. Feed the wires through the center in the chamber there. You can pull those through from the bottom. Or, or actually it'd be through the top of the plane now. It's upside down. Make sure no wire is going to get caught on the intake uh, chamber. Just push that down like so. Take the remaining four screws and tighten those down. And you don't want to over tighten either, but you want them really snug. can take out the battery tray, it's just held in by four screws, and then you can wire tie the spaghetti, and then you can place that underneath the battery tray along with your receiver. So I'm going to have my receiver sitting in something like this, and then the battery tray will go right over that, and that way everything's nice and tidy, and you won't be fighting it when you're putting your battery in. Now I'm adding foam tack. since I have the battery board out. And that way I can put the non-stick uh, or the non-slip material on the battery tray so the battery won't slip around. And then I'll put the battery tray back in. After you have all the control rods on, make sure that you do watch for proper orientation of each control rod. Then you can go ahead and put on the drop tank and that just slides on the slots just like that. And then we'll continue on with the embellishments. A small antenna goes on the front. A pedo tube goes on the front. An antenna goes on its nape. And an antenna goes on its belly, just like so. This plane is now finished. Let's go fly.
once you get up to speed, go ahead and get in that elevator. That sounds great. Mike, I know what you're gonna do. Whistles. <laughs> that was close, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>